What's up? This is Jeff with Godbolt Exotics. I uh, just picked up a package, so let's go in and open it up and see what's inside. Alright, so got a box here from Fear Not. Um, this is a collab that I'm doing with them, and uh, let's open it up. Uh, there was a few species that I felt comfortable housing and taking care of. Um, there are also, as you guys have seen in previous videos, there are some species I'm not all that comfortable with. Happy Valentine's Day from Fear Not. I guess they sent me a sucker. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see, make sure there's heat pack still warm. All right, so let's open these up, see what's in here. Okay. So we've got Grandma Stole uh, Pulchra. Um, forgive me, guys, if I mispronounce some of these. Seriopagopus species Hottie Hottie. A lot of these I've kept in the past. Um, so that's one of the reasons I felt comfortable with them. Uh, Orphanaceous Philippinus. I don't exactly know how to pronounce that, so forgive me on that one. Avicularia species British Guiana. Um, this is probably my, my favorite one out of the bunch. Homeoma chilensis. All right. Amazonius germani, which used to be the, um, this is the orange tree spider. They used to be Pseudoclamoris gigas. Um, I remember I had three of these and thought I'd have a female and all matured out male. <laughs> so they didn't live very long, but they're probably one of my favorite species of spider. Most of these are new world. Uh, forming Gochilla species Rufus, or the peach earth tiger. Um, I've always kind of been fascinated by those guys. And the Theraphosini species Piura. Um, I'm not so good with common names, so um, I'm not going to really go too much into the common names. But right now I've got all their uh, tubs set up, so should make uh, the rehouse or I guess the transfer over pretty seamless. And I do have a rehouse that I need to do of my second um, Brachiopelma albiceps, which I'll be doing at the end of this video. That that uh, tarantula is um, one of three that I've kept from the larger group that I used to have, and. I've had that animal since it was a sling. Um, I got it actually with the other Brachiopelma 
Albiceps that I just rehoused um, a couple weeks ago and put that video up. So uh, it's just a little bit smaller. So anyway, they're both in pre-molt, so hopefully they will uh, get some nice adult colors once they molt. Um, but anyway, let's get to transferring these guys over. Okay guys, so I'm gonna try and do this uh, myself, which is a bit ambitious, but um, let's see how this goes. This is the Avicular species British Guiana. So this is a species that you guys know I love Avex. So I've got my catch cup here. Um, and I'm on the table, so if, anyways, I'm gonna actually, I don't wanna do this, okay. What I might do is just put this. I'm actually watching, I'm not watching the camera. I see. Nope, that's not the leg. You know what? Let's try and do, I'm gonna try and angle the camera so that um, it's stationary. One second. Okay, this is better. That way at least I have two hands. I think I see this little guy girl in there. Maybe. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> you see it in there? There we go. You can probably see it right there, which is kind of hard to see. Sorry, I had to move the camera. So you could probably see it right there. So anyway, should do fine in here. We're gonna put this on and transfer the uh, species name so I don't lose track of what's and what. There we go, first one down. Next up is the Polkra. So go ahead and take this name tag off. Sorry, it's kind of, you're seeing my hand here. Um, put that on there, take the top off. Um, this one's a little bit bigger. So I might put a, like a little starter burrow up underneath. Um, but yeah, let's take this one out. Again, I've got my catch cup, although I didn't need it for the last one. Um, they're pretty small, so I'm not super concerned. Um, starting off with the less flighty species so I can at least get my feet wet. Um, and so this is the, the Brazilian black, um, super docile species from what I've been able to gather. Um, so let's 
see here. Okay. Well, it's in a larger tube, but it is not a larger specimen. So let me get some of this stuff out so that you guys can see. They all kind of look the same at this point, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, this one's got a big booty. <laughs> you can see it crawling around in there. So what I might do is actually just plop this, this one in like so. There we go. Okay, that one uh, got out, but got it back in pretty easily. So it's actually gone up under, let's see if I could show you, up under the cork. So anyway, um, really, really excited to have these guys. And uh, let's get this top on. <laughs> Next up is the uh, Orphanaceous Philippinus or the Philippine Tangerine. This is an old world um, species, obligate burrower, but I've seen so many videos of them that they look, uh, they look really, really cool. So as you guys can tell, I've got some of these set up um, with cork bark laying flat. And I've also got some with the cork bark up. So depending on the species being a uh, burrowing species slash terrestrial species or an arboreal species, I'll be putting them uh, into one or the other. So anyway, I apologize if you hear any ticking and tacking in the background. I do have Harley and Bodie out walking around. So, okay, so let's go, go ahead and get this one rehoused um so far so good on the rehouses uh doesn't seem like i've had any uh hiccups that i couldn't overcome or anything that's been too crazy so um i'm doing this on my table so in, I, in the past i used to do this in my shed and there's just too many places for the spiders to go and i'll never get them i have to tear apart my shed if i if one gets away, but here it's pretty easy. So, all right. So I'm going to take the tape off. Hopefully this one is not on the top. Got my catch cup ready. Okay, you can kind of see the booty in there. Um, now these guys are super fast, so I'm going to make sure to not, probably will not take too many chances with these guys. All right, so far so good. I see it in there. It's very hard to see with the camera. Ooh. Okay. So that's going on. <laughs> you could probably see it's already up around the top. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to take any chances there. Again, they all kind of look the same at this point. I'm gonna put pictures of the adults in the videos, just some from pictures that I've grabbed off the internet. I'll make sure I let you guys know um, where I, I'll put 
links of where I got the pictures from because they're not taken from me, most of them. Um, but I do want, you know, to make it a little more enjoyable, I want to make sure you guys can see the adult versions of what these guys are going to look like once they mature. Um, because all the, all the babies, for the most part, look the same. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, with a lot of these species, maybe some of you have not ever heard of them or you've never kept them. So at the very least, I'd like to show you what the adults look like so that maybe you can see if that's something you'd like to get. Now, this is an old world species. They're an obligate burrower. Um, I didn't really do a starter burrow because they don't really need it at this size. They can just go up under the, the bark or like in some type of a crevice here. There's actually a little makeshift burrow already made based off the ledge of the cork. Um, and so anyway, um, got some moss in there that I'm actually putting from these in that will hopefully keep the humidity up. Almost all of these, for the exception of the Homeoma chilensis, um, do require some humidity. Um, well, the Theraphosinae, Theraphosinae species Peora maybe doesn't. Um, they're a Peruvian species. I need to do a little more research on if they need humidity or not. But um, most of the time, slings are kept pretty much the same. Uh, most slings benefit from some hum from some humidity. So anyway, um, okay. So three down, one, two, three, four, five, more to go. Okay, we're gonna go with the Amazonius germani or formerly the um, Pseudoclamoris gigas. Uh, these guys, believe it or not, I have found that the New World Arboreals like the Somapias, the Tappies, and these are much faster and harder to corral compared to the Hotty Hotty in the Old World. So, um, Obviously, the, the, the venom potency is not quite as, as bad, but um, so anyway, we'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. Um, if any of you guys have never bought from or are thinking of buying from Fear Not, um, I used to buy from them quite a bit. All of these came from Fear Not, and Tanya is, she runs one of, I think, only two or maybe three brick and mortar arachnid invert shops in the country. So they actually have a brick and mortar storefront um, that uh, that's crooked and it's gonna drive me nuts with my OCD. But anyway, we're gonna open this one up. Um, hopefully it goes well if, uh, it doesn't, then, um, I will be doing some editing. All right. So. Again, these guys are tiny right now, so I'm not like worried about a bite or anything like that. It's more so just them disappearing so so far the three that i've rehoused have been alive which is great um i feel like this one is going to be just bolting out because i can't see it right now and it is alive because the moss just moved Okay, pray for me. Oh, whoa, this one's little, little, tiny. Tiny, 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 tiny. This is the smallest one of all of them so far. All right. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to angle this, so. 
Come on. You guys might think that I'm like being kind of rough, but I'm just trying to get them out and Okay, you can see it right there on the top. Oops. Right there at the at the bottom. Right there. These are actually pretty slings. I forgot how pretty they are. Okay, so Amazonia Germani, the orange tree spider. Okay guys, another old world here, the Syriopagopus, or the Syriopagopus species Hotty Hotty, um, or the Violet or Purple Earth Tiger. I love the Earth Tigers. I know that, whoops, I, I hit the camera. I know that they are an old world and extremely fast, and there's the whole venom thing, um, you know, that they do have medically significant venom, but I've had three of them, and they have been just extremely easy to keep. Very, very easy to keep. So they're great feeders. They feed even when they don't wanna feed. They're that type of tarantula. So I just love them and I don't, you know, I respect them and I don't think that they are a, um, a species that, I, I'm, let's just put it this way. I'm just comfortable with them. So, okay, so here goes nothing. They're fast, but they're very deliberate in their movements. So if you're trying to get them to go from point A to point B, they aren't too bad. So this one's just kind of hanging out in there, that dark spot is basically the spider. So, see it just sitting there on the piece of moss. There's a better, a much better angle. So, take this and put that in in there. This is the enclosure. Again, I'm adding some of the moss in here. It's got cork that it'll, it'll do. These guys like to burrow when they're, when they're babies. My knee just hit the table again. Sorry guys. Here we go. Little brown spider, just like all the other ones, <laughs> but they get really, really pretty pretty colors. Come on. Other way. Okay. Easy. You probably see through, but that's it right there. Stoked, absolutely stoked. That was the Syriopagopus species Hottie Hottie or the orange or violet tree, um, earth tiger. Purple, sorry, not orange. Violet or purple earth tiger. This one I have never kept before, but I know a lot of other people that have, and from what I've seen, they are beautiful. They are a dwarf arboreal earth tiger. This is the peach earth tiger. Uh, they do not get very big, but they are extremely fast, and they are an old world. So I'm a little nervous about the rehouse, but so far everything's gone really, really smooth. It took me one or two 
The first two I had to actually pause the camera and actually corral it into the cage, but uh, or the little box, but doing doing good now. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this one rehoused. And like I was saying, um, I'm gonna have adult pictures that I've grabbed off the internet to actually show you guys what the adult versions look like. I went through and downloaded a bunch off my phone uh, or on my phone um, a couple nights ago in prep. I was actually getting all these little uh, little tub setups um, ready for these guys uh, during Super Bowl. So <laughs> we were watching the game and I was sitting on the floor with everything sprawled out all over the carpet, you know, um, getting all these guys set up so that I could have it ready once they came. But anyway, here, here we go. Just putting the moss from these little containers into the um, actual cage that these guys are gonna have. They'll be in these for a couple months uh, based off how many times they molt. Uh, okay, it's kind of hard getting that little piece out. I'm not quite sure. If this one webbed some of this up or what the deal is. I was thinking about putting water bowls in these, but I'm actually not going to because some of you may be wondering why I don't have water bowls in there. These, these specimens are so small, they could actually drown in the, uh, in the water bowl. So I don't want to take that chance. And the uh, moss will hold enough moisture that these guys can go in and, and uh, drink anyway. So, oh, oh wow. I did not expect this to be a black spider because they definitely aren't when they're older. I'm gonna put this in before it drops. How cool. Wow. There it is right there. You probably can't see it, but um, these guys get peach as they get older. Let me see if I can take this out. Nope. <laughs> I do not want to lose. But that's it. So they're gonna get a very um, peach color when they grow older. I didn't know that the slings were black or this dark. That's really like a black color. Wow, crazy. I had no idea. Very cool. In you go. Okay. So that is the, uh, the forming go Formingo Keyless Species Rufus. You guys, tell me how to enunciate that. I have no idea. Okay, so these are probably the two I'm like the most excited about. Um, they should be pretty easy rehouses and they're fairly docile. So um, we're gonna go with the second to the most favorite one that I'm excited about, the Theraphosini species Peora, or it's like the Peruvian flame or something. I'm not quite sure uh, the common name, but again, you, I'll have pictures of the adults uh, from the internet on here you guys can see. So let's go ahead and get a name tag on um, on the top.
These little enclosures I got off of Amazon and they are really, really cool. I need to put a link in the description. Um, they came in a box of eight, which, um, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. So I'm actually using all of them. All right, little dude. Where are you at? You're not in the moss. Okay. Holy cow. This is tiny. I don't know if I want to put this one in here. I think this is too small. Can you even see? It is alive, but that is a small, small little... I think I'm going to have to put this in a dram vial, to be honest with you. Okay. Well, let me... Let me, uh... Redo that, that one. I think I'm going to do is actually put it in here. I think that's probably a better, better enclosure. Um, so let's do that. We'll need that guy. I'm gonna put a little, little substrate in there. And a little moss. I think, or do I wanna put moss in there? Maybe not. Maybe I don't wanna, Maybe I'll put a little bit of moss in, but maybe that's too much. Truth be told, this actually already has moss in it. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put a little piece right there and and you go come on there we go see it right there So that is the Theraphosinite species Piora. Now on to my favorite, Homeoma chilensis. I have wanted one of these guys for a long time. Very small, spider in vial, unpack carefully. Okay, so probably what I'm going to do is the same thing I did with this last one. And that is probably keep it in something like this. So let's, all right, let's take, take the tag off. The only reason I'm transferring it into one of the same size is because there's, uh, there's actually um, paper in there, so. So let's, let's go ahead and put a little bit of dirt in there.
take a little piece of moss, put that in there. Oh, that's too big. Just want like a little tiny piece of moss. And I might actually move my Filipinas um, and one as well, because I'm a little worried about some of the ventilation holes in these enclosures. I bought one a long time ago and it escaped. So. All right. Holy cow, it's sitting right there on the top. My goodness. Okay, it's in there. Wowzers, that is a tiny spider. Very small. Goodness me. For something so small, they are expensive little buggers. <laughs> Okay, so after relooking at these, I actually did move these guys back into dram vials just because I feel like they are too too small. They would probably be able to get through um, these holes. Um, so I moved the Theraphosinite species Pura back into one and the Amazonius Germani or the orange tree spider, I moved that back into one. Um, and then obviously this uh, Chilean flame, the homeomioma, homey, homoioma chilensis, I don't know how to say it, um, moved that into one as well. This one um, has kind of a slender abdomen, but I don't think it would be able to get through these hole, these ventilation holes. I mean, they are, you know, the spider itself is not tiny um, compared to some of the other ones. So I think we'll be okay. So anyway, I'm gonna take uh, Dubia because these guys will scavenge feed and put it in there and get these guys a meal. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, it's Valentine's Day, so you can see all of the homemade uh, little, I don't know what to call them, little things um, that, uh, <laughs> we, that we make for everybody, um, at least everybody in the family. 
So if you have any comments, questions, anything, uh, you can leave it in the comment section below. I'll make sure to uh, get to it within a week or so. Um, I really appreciate everybody that tunes in on a normal basis. I'm trying to do these every Saturday. So this one will actually come out in a week or two. But thanks for subscribing. If you haven't yet, make sure you do subscribe. Hit the like button. I try to pay attention to all the analytics to see how the channel's performing month in and month out. So all that stuff helps me. I'm not making any money off the channel. It's just mostly a labor of love. It's a hobby and it kind of gives me a distraction from the rigors of uh, my day job and just life in general. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it's entertaining while also educational. And I really hope, most importantly, I hope I'm not putting any incorrect information out there. If I am, please let me know so that I can correct it on an upcoming episode. Take care, stay safe, and don't sweat the small stuff. Peace.